so honored to, to be here with you. Um, I have so much love and respect for your leaders here. Um, I was just telling John, I met the Lord on a baseball field, and I didn't know anything about church. And um, I had an experience with God. And then I started going to a church. You know, someone said, oh, you, you're, you know, you got religion. Someone said to me, you should go to this church. And I walked into a church. And when I walked in, one of the first meetings I went to was a Tuesday night prayer meeting. I didn't know what people did in church because I didn't, I had no exposure to this whatsoever. And, um, and I remember walking in to the church in Brooklyn and just feeling the presence of God. And, and, and it just changed everything about my life. And I just said to John, I'm so amazed because I just walked through those doors and it's like the first time I ever walked into the church and the presence of God is so sweet and so beautiful. Could we put our hands together and thank him? Hallelujah. The Lord is near. And if you're online, you're connected to us. There's no distance right now because the Holy Spirit is with you the same way that he's with us. And what a blessing to be in the Lord's house. Thank you for coming out to the Lord's house to begin the year by calling upon the name of the Lord. And what a night. You know, our country needs us to be right here. How many would say amen? amen. They need us to be right here doing what we are doing. I was at the hotel and, and uh, I saw in the news what, what's happening at the Capitol. And I said, Lord, oh my goodness, I can't believe what's happening in our country. And, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about the fact that something incredible can happen because the Lord is here and because we are here. And um, so my, my comments are slightly altered tonight, but I'm using the same text. And, you know, when things get really, really dark and really um, difficult and harsh, Chicago has been um, on fire for a while, very divided. People are very hurt, very angry. When things get really dark, if you look all throughout history, when they got just like this, what it meant was that the times are ripe for revival. They are ripe. How many would say amen? This is the perfect time for the Lord to sweep in just like Pastor John prayed and do something incredible. And we need to believe God for that. But what you see in the scriptures is that whenever God um, brought about uh, an incredible deliverance, whenever God brought about an incredible revival, he always began by picking people. God starts great moves of God through his people. Everybody say, pick me, Lord. That's right. We need to say, pick me, Lord. Our neighborhoods, our circles of influence, everywhere we go, our families, they're ripe for revival. But what God does is he picks people. Very quickly, for example, like in the Bible, I'll read to you a little bit out of the life of Moses. God wants to bring about a great deliverance. America needs deliverance. God wants to bring about a great deliverance. What does he do? He goes and he finds a person. He finds a guy who is living like a shepherd, trying to take care of his family. You know, he, he, felt, he just felt like an average Joe, and then he has this incredible meeting with God. And after he has this incredible meeting with God, he takes this one man and he puts a stick in his hand, and one man with a stick, and the most outrageous, miraculous deliverance that you could ever imagine took place through just one man. Because that's the way God does it. God picks people. He, he, he finds, his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth, and, and, and he finds a couple. 
He finds a couple in Missouri, and they have a Bible in one hand, and then a, a, a bag of chocolate chip cookies in the other hand. <laughs> and you know what? And they start to, they surrender themselves to the Lord, and they say, Lord, if you want to use me, God, use me. And guess what happens? Outrageous miracles just like this. That's what happens when people just offer themselves and surrender themselves. Just average people with, um, with whatever's in their hands. If you're a mechanic, God could anoint that wrench. <laughs> you know, if you're an accountant, he can anoint your pencils. Wherever you are today, your frying pans. He picks people. And this is going to be an awesome year. But you know what would make this year really, really awesome? Is if the Lord really, really used us. I hope you're here at the beginning of the year, at the other campuses looking online. And I hope you'll join together and say, Lord, the church right now needs to be used for your glory, God. And God, I want you to begin with me. Would somebody say amen, God? Begin with me. Use us for your glory, oh God. I want to be used by God. God, God is no respecter of persons. He just picks us when we open up our heart to him. I really want to be used by God. And what I want to do at the beginning of the year is talk about a few key things that will be crucial to be used by the Lord. And we're going to look at this from the life of, of uh, Moses in, in, in the book of Exodus. And so I want to read. We don't have a lot of time, but as you know, this story is, is obviously famous. Moses, after being 40 years in the desert, he's in the desert and he sees a fire, a, 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 a bush on fire, but the bush was not being consumed. God is a burning fire, but it's a fire of love. It's a fire of life. It's not a fire that creates pain and tears things down. How many know the fire of God builds things up? And so he sees this bush and God calls him and there's this little simple interaction that man, I believe right now, we need to do what the Lord told Moses to do. So I wanna just read this to you. It says, when the Lord saw that Moses was coming closer, he called to him from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He answered, yes, here I am. Let's say that together, ready? Yes, here I am. God said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals because you're standing on holy ground. And so if we really want to be used by God, this is super important. And man, when I looked at the TV today, boy, is this super important. What does he say to Moses? He says, take off your sandals. When we get up in the morning, we put on our shoes because we're going to work. When we get home, we take off our shoes. God says to Moses, I want you to take off your sandals because you know what? You can't work here. I'm the only one who can work here. <laughs> and so the first thing that has to happen, brothers and sisters, is that right now, America is in such desperate need. Our cities are in such desperate need. You know what the church of Jesus Christ has to do? We have to take off our sandals because we can't do it. And we need to get desperate because only God could do it. Could somebody say amen? amen. The second thing he said is, don't come any closer, okay? Take off your sandals first. And then you can come close because this is holy ground. So the second thing, if you really want to be used by God, not only do you need to take off your sandals, stop trying to do things in your own strength, stop trying to fix your marriage, stop trying to fix your career, stop trying to fix your future, stop trying to fix your life, stop trying to fix your friends, stop trying to fix the country in your own strength, and get on holy ground. We need to get on holy ground. 
We need to get so before the Lord, the Lord's ground is holy ground. The Lord's opinion about things is not the same as our opinions about things. I remember when Joshua went up to God and said, hey Lord, are you for us or against us? Are you for our team or their team? And guess what God said, neither. But I'm here as the captain of the Lord's army. The question is, will you get on my team? How many know we need to get on God's team right now and we need to do it God's way. We need to get on holy ground. God is a holy God. And we have our opinions and we have our, we have our own desires and we have our own bents. But I wanna encourage you, if you really wanna be used by God, get on holy ground first. You know, when we first got married, Chrissy and I were having a unique season of, uh, um, I was really immature when we first got married. And so I, I called a pastor friend of mine and wanted some advice about marriage. And I remember saying to him, well, the, you know, well, this is the truth. This is right, this is the truth. And he said, you know what, Al? He said, being right, or the truth even, is not one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You could be right, but you could still be wrong. Have you ever noticed that? Nobody here, right? When you get on holy ground, you do the right things, you stand for the right things, but you do it with the, in the right way with the right heart, with the right words, with words of love, with words of life. There is a way we can be right, but we need to represent Jesus. So as I pray today, I pray, Lord, let the church rise up and represent you. And how do we do that? We need to get not on political grounds, not on grounds of opinion. We need to get on holy ground. Come on, lift your hands right now in your house and the different campuses. Lift your hands right now because holy ground means different things to different people. But I'm telling you right now, when you've been on holy ground, when you take off your shoes, everything about your heart and your attitude changes. There's something powerful that can happen to your disposition. And so could we pray right now? Come on, lift your voice and say, God, take me there. God, put us on holy ground, Lord Jesus. God, would you, we want to be used by you and we recognize that it's not our way, it's not our strength, it's not our, it's not our idea, it's your will, it's your way. And we are willing to humble ourselves here oh God look down from heaven we humble ourselves and we want to take off our shoes oh God and Lord we want to step onto your holy ground oh God so that you could work oh God so that you could work Lord beginning in our homes so that you could work in our neighborhoods so that you could work on the jobs so you could use us Lord but Father, we want to step on holy ground. So may there be a sweeping of every heart and mind. And before we speak, before we step out, Lord, would you help us to speak from holy ground? Would you help us to respond from holy ground, Lord Jesus? Because that's when great deliverance can come. Move by your mighty power. Move, O oh God. We want to live, oh God, on holy ground. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Our God is an awesome God, isn't he? Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to think about that. Think about your life. Think about where you're standing and what you're standing for. We need to stand for Jesus. And if we're going to stand for Jesus, we have to stand on holy ground. And listen, let me just say this, because I know that man are these days charged. But here's the truth. God is always right. Could somebody say amen? amen? He's always right. There's never been a moment that God was even remotely wrong. He is absolutely right. Could I get a strong amen? amen. So what that means is, if that God doesn't agree with you, you're wrong. And so, don't get upset when God doesn't agree with you. Just say, Lord, 
I want to follow you. I want to do this your way, no matter how I feel. Change my heart. I want to live on holy ground. How many would say amen? Amen. 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 So that's the first thing if we really want to be used by God. We've got to let the power of the Holy Spirit work through us. It's not our strength. It's the strength of heaven. And that's why prayer meetings are so important. Because when we reach out to him together like this, special, special things are happening right now. We don't even understand what's taking place in the spirit realm that's going to manifest in the lives of God's people and in the lives of this country because of what God is doing through God's people. Because we're here. So that's the first thing. First thing that has to happen is we got to get on holy ground. But then the second thing that happens, that needs to happen, right? is recognize that God wants to do great things, but um, sometimes it's, even though it's in his heart to do great things, we could look back on a year and say something like, um, the Lord almost used me. We don't want to say almost. We want to say he did. And when you look at this great deliverance, in the life of Moses, what you see is that this great deliverance, should I say through the life of Moses, this great deliverance almost didn't happen. It almost didn't happen. And what happened was, is Moses started to do something that's very dangerous to each and every one of us. This will be the difference maker for how much God uses us in 2021. So I want to read, I'm reading out of the Good News Translation. I, you know, I read through the Bible. Uh, I don't know how many times, I read the Bible every day. And so um, from time to time I'll change translations because I start to predict what's in there. So I'll move to the NIV or the ESV or, you know, I'm not making any grand statement. I'm just reading the Good News Translation right now for a little while, and I love the way the Good News Translation says this moment between when Moses was on holy ground, between Moses and God. Look at what it says. It says, but Moses said, no, Lord, don't send me. I've never been a good speaker, and I haven't become one since you began to speak to me. I am a poor speaker slow and hesitant. Everyone say hesitant. The Lord said to him, who gives man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or dumb? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? It is I, the Lord, now go. Everyone say, now go. And I will help you to speak, and I will tell you what to say. And this shows us the second thing that really has to, God has to help us if we want to be used in 2021. And what has to happen is that we have to break through hesitation. We have to break through hesitation. Many, many of people don't realize the fullness of the call of God upon their lives because they hesitate. Because they make excuses and they, they stall and they hesitate. Families could be absolutely transformed if one man, maybe you're here, maybe you're watching, you know God has called you, you know God has put his hand on your life, but you come from a broken background, you come from abuse, you come from all of these things, and you don't know how you're going to do it, and God is saying, just step out, take this step, start to pray with your wife, start to pray with your kids, don't hesitate, and if you won't hesitate, watch the great thing that I will do. We have to break through hesitation. So many of us, we don't get to the next level of faith because when we come to that shoreline, we hesitate. 
We make excuses like Moses was, was uh, making excuses and we call it humility. This is very important for us to know. Listen, humility waits to be sent. Yes, okay? Humility waits to be sent, but hesitation waits after being sent. Hesitation is not humility. Hesitation is fear. Don't go if God didn't tell you to go, but how many know if God tells you to go, it's time to go. There's a big difference, and we make all of these excuses about, well, I'm not sure. But God wants to, like your family will be different. The generations will be different by your taking that step. All sorts of uh, scenarios will be different if you just take that step and break through hesitation. You know, you, you, you may or may not know, I, I, uh, I, I grew up playing baseball. I, almost played pro baseball. I got drafted by the uh, White Sox out of high school. When I was about, um, like by the time I was 14, you know, I, was on my, I, I tried out for the varsity team in high school, good baseball in New York. Tried out for the varsity team, made the varsity team, and I was uh, undefeated as a freshman on varsity. I beat everyone I threw in the high 80s when I was 14. One of the teams that we played against was uh, a team that had a guy on who would go on to be the um, number one pick in the nation. He was the starting shortstop for the Cubs. I pitched against him, I beat his team. He hit two balls off of me that are like satellites for NASA right now, they're still going. <laughs> but I still beat him. And uh, whenever I saw him, hey, I beat you, bro, because you know? So, and, um, and I remember after that experience, I, I, mean, I threw 88 miles an hour at 14. By the time I was a senior, I was already in the mid-90s. I had a great curveball. Um, this is going someplace. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I always wanted to get better. I always wanted to break through. And if you want to get better, you have to change. Okay? If you want your life in God, if you want to grow in God, things have to change. You have to break through. So anyway, real quickly, they, I started to, I was studying and I, I, I said, man, I got to learn how to throw a change up. So a change up, they say in the big leagues, it's the best pitch in baseball, but really what a change up is, it's just a pitch that is deceptive. It looks fast, but it's really like batting practice. So when you, when you throw a change, if you throw a change up every pitch, they just hit home runs off of you. The reason why a change up is effective is because if you're throwing 90 miles an hour and then you throw a ball 75 miles an hour, but it looks exactly the same, well, you deceive the hitter. The problem is, is that when you go to pitch and you, and you go to throw a ball that you know everyone can hit, especially with me, I wasn't a good hitter, but I could hit a change up, you know? So I was afraid and I would, I would practice and practice, but I remember my coach saying, there comes a point when you have to throw the pitch. Everybody say, throw the pitch. There comes a time that in the game you have to throw the change up. You have to throw the ball that is like a meatball and you've got to take the risk. There's a, there's a moment in time where you have to throw the pitch. There's a, there's a moment in time when you have to step up. Somebody here has to step up and say, we're going to pray now in my house. Somebody's got to step up and say, we're not going to live that way anymore. I'm going to be different. We're going to be different in this house. How many would say amen? You got to throw the pitch. You got to step out. You got to say to your friends, I'm not going to do that anymore. You got to throw the pitch. You got to cross the line and say, Lord, what are you asking me to do? I'm going to say what you want me to say. I'm going to do what you want me to do. Someone's got to start tithing today. Sooner or later, you got to start saying, God, I put you first. You got to throw the pitch. No more excuses. If it's in the word, if God says go, it's time to go in, in 2021. How many would say amen? Some people need to join a ministry. It's great that you're watching online. It's great that you're in church, but you got to throw the pitch. You got to step out and do the new thing that God has called you to do. 
You have to break through hesitation. Some people, this is a very um, emotional thing. Can I tell you, the older I get, and I see people, if they could send a keyboard player, I see people who really love God, but your emotions are jacked up because of your past, because of trauma, because of hurt and pain. I'm telling you right now, there's got to be a day when you say, I'm not going to live my life like someone hurt me. I'm going to believe and I'm going to step out and just love and give and care and share. I'm not going to hide anymore. I'm not going to stay in the background this year. If America ever needed us to reach across lines that we've never reached across before. If America ever needed us to talk about Jesus in ways that we've never talked about before and love people and, 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 and love on people and, and hug on people, even, even though we're socially distancing. If there was ever a time for us to be absolutely different, stepping out and saying, God, I want to be Jesus when I walk into that room today. Doesn't matter what the trauma was, I'm going to love anyway. Doesn't matter what the hurt was, doesn't matter how difficult it was, I'm going to give anyway. I'm going to, I'm going to break through hesitation. Now let me close with this real quickly. There's two key reasons why we hesitate. Number one, we tend to focus on how we see ourselves versus how we see God. Versus, I'm sorry, versus how God sees us. And what I mean by that is, you may have an argument about yourself that's true, but it doesn't really matter if God sees you different, does it? Because God could take a stick in your hand and use that stick to bring about an incredible miracle. How many would say amen? It doesn't matter how we see ourselves. It's a matter how God, what matters is how God sees us. And we need to stop arguing with God. Throw the pitch. Be different. What pitch is the Lord asking you to throw this year? Someone maybe it's that you just, you don't, you don't reach out to people. Someone may, maybe you, you have a special gift and you're just hiding it. God wants to use that gift. God wants to use exactly what's in your hand. Everybody has a first time they pray in public. Everyone has a, a first time that they say grace. And it's kind of crazy and funny. I, I, I've never forgotten that. Um, but after a while, you get used to it. I hope you say grace in public. You got to throw the pitch. But it's not about how you see yourself. You know, sometimes we say, you know, if I was God, I wouldn't choose me. That's true, but you're not God. So just go ahead and throw the pitch. Go ahead and do what God is asking you. Yes, it's great to say, bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me in 2021. Yes, bless me, Lord. But how about use me, Lord? Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, in 2021. Hallelujah. How many want to be used in 2021? You know, the funny thing is Moses had this argument about him not being able to speak, but you never see that whenever he spoke after that. There's not one instance where you saw like, oh, snap, Moses was really jacked up today. Because you don't understand who you can be if you just pray tonight, if you go home and pray and get along with God. You just have no idea who you could be if God put his hand on your life. How many want the hand of God upon your life? Amen. Here's the second thing and then we'll, I really want us to pray. The second thing is hesitation has a tendency to ignore the encouragement of God. Imagine having a conversation with God and saying, no, Lord. But that's what Moses did. He said, no, Lord. Everybody say, yes, Lord. 
Use, being used by God is not for someone else. If God is telling you, I want to use you. One of the most important things of 2021 is that we have to receive the word of the Lord. You ever, you ever wonder, like I, I have such a profound admiration for John. Do you know why, Pastor John? It's because of how he hears God. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you wanna hear God, like Pastor John and Debbie, you've gotta start listening. <laughs> So if he tells you a small thing now, do the small thing, and then guess what? He'll tell you to do bigger things. If you do the little thing now, then nine months from now, the little things won't be that little, and they'll tell you to do something bigger. And then all of a sudden you say, oh, I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out. When Chrissy and I, when we sold our house, and we, we had no idea of what God was going to do in Chicago. And most people around us saying, you're crazy for going. And this is, you know, how are you going to get a job? How, how are you going to live? All, all of that stuff. All we knew is God said, go. But we didn't, do, we didn't arrive there one day. Like uh, uh, all of a sudden we're super spiritual. Is day by day, little by little, surrendering to God. And when God encourages you, receive the encouragement. You need to receive when you read from the Bible. You need to receive what God is telling you about you. You need to receive. Because when you receive, then guess what? You can throw the pitch. All of the people in this room, think about what God could do through all the people in this room if we would break through hesitation. Think about the specific assignments. The Bible says we are God's workmanship and he has created good works in advance for us to do. Do you believe that you, God has a work for you to do in 2021? Could I, could I get an amen? <clears throat> then say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to take off my sandals. I want to get on holy ground. And God, I need to break hesitation. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we wanna let you know that we wanna connect with all our online family. You can just click the link next to me to connect to us. We'd love to meet you and connect with you. As well, we'd love if you subscribe to the channel and press the bell for notifications. I'll tell you what, it's a great thing to do because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content, and that helps you stay up to date with everything that's happening. We hope you have a great day to day and we'd love for you to join us live for our services every Sunday and Wednesday. Thank you again for watching and God bless.